A solid start to the week on Wall Street Monday after a volatile couple of days. The Dow roared ahead with a 646-point gain. The S&P 500 rose 53. The Nasdaq gained 139. Victoria Green, chief investment officer at G Squared Private Wealth, says the market is benefiting from a rotation back into value names that do well in an inflationary environment. So well, if you think about it, all of a sudden last week, the Fed came out a little bit more hawkish, right? And it kind of spooked the market a little bit that tapering is going to go fast. Their market's pricing in at three rate hikes now next year. And that scares growth a little bit more than it scares value. Typically, a rate hike inflationary environment is very good for cyclicals and value. So you're seeing the rallies in financials, industrials, energies. Uh, and that's what's really leading the market today. Coles was a standout stock. The department store chain was urged by investor and hedge fund Engine Capital to consider putting itself up for sale or at least spin off the retailer's e-commerce business. Coles responded by saying it continues to examine all opportunities for maximizing shareholder value. Coles jumped more than 5% on the day. Tesla shares headed in the other direction. The Securities and Exchange Commission has opened an investigation into an allegation made by a Tesla whistleblower that the company did not adequately disclose risks of fire for solar panels made by Solar City either before or after Tesla bought the solar energy provider, according to documents seen by Reuters. Shares of Tesla finished with a small loss. But there were much sharper declines for BuzzFeed. The company had a terrible debut after coming to market via SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company. Investors wanted out of the deal before the company even went public. Shares of the digital media company slumped 11%. So we've already made clear that we won't be represented there at a ministerial level. We made that clear to China, I think, in October. Uh, and so for us, that's a, a decision we've already made. Uh, range of factors, but mostly to do with COVID and the fact that the logistics of travel and so on around COVID are not, uh, not conducive to that kind of trip. But we've made clear to China on numerous occasions our concerns about human rights issues as recently as the Prime Minister uh, talking to President Xi. So uh, they're well aware of our view on human rights, but we had already made the decision not to attend. Samsung has announced its biggest shake-up since 2017. The South Korean conglomerate unveiled plans on Tuesday to merge its mobile and consumer electronics divisions. It also named new co-CEOs with Hong Jong-hee, promoted to vice chairman and co-CEO of the newly merged division. The sweeping moves are the latest sign of centralised change at Samsung, after vice chairman J.Y. Lee was paroled in August from a bribery conviction. Samsung is looking to simplify its structure and grow its logic chip business as it sets its sights on overtaking TSMC to become the number one chip contract manufacturer by 2030. Late last month, Samsung chose Taylor in Texas as the site of a planned $17 billion US chip plant after months of deliberation. The decision coincided with Lee's first business trip to the United States in five years. Samsung plans to spend $206 billion over the next three years on areas such as semiconductors, artificial intelligence, robotics and biopharmaceuticals. The White House on Monday said the U.S. will not send government officials to the upcoming Beijing Olympics due to China's human rights atrocities after Beijing pledged unspecified countermeasures against any diplomatic boycott. The Biden administration will not send any diplomatic or official representation to the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics and Paralympic Games given the PRC's ongoing genocide and crimes against uh, humanity in Xinjiang and other human rights abuses. Press Secretary Jen Psaki said the diplomatic boycott sends a clear message but would not prevent American athletes from attending, which she said would penalize athletes who have prepared for years. The athletes on Team USA have our full support. We will be behind them 100 percent as we cheer them on from home. President Joe Biden said last month he was considering a boycott amid criticism of China's human rights record, including what Washington says is genocide against minority Muslims in its western region of Xinjiang. Earlier on Monday, China's foreign ministry called any boycotts by politicians grandstanding. No one cares whether they come or not, and it has no influence on Beijing's success in hosting the Winter Olympics. 
China's embassy in Washington did not respond immediately to a request for comment. We uh, believe there is an opportunity, a window before us to resolve this diplomatically, uh, chiefly through full implementation of uh, the Minsk agreements. Should Russia follow this path of confrontation and military action, uh, we have made clear to Moscow that we will respond resolutely, uh, including with a range of what we have called high-impact economic measures uh, that we've refrained from using in the past.